Hello everyone and welcome to our second mini lecture on opioids. Today we're going to be talking about the opioid receptors and peptides. So getting right into it, the first one we're talking about is the uh, mu opioid receptor. This receptor is, if you've heard of an opioid receptor, it's probably this one. It's got a high affinity for morphine. Uh, it is implicated in um, analgesia through its action in receptors in the medial thalamus, uh, PAG, medium raffe, and the spinal cord. It's implicated with uh, regulating feeding, feeding behavior and positive reinforcement through its expression in the nucleus accumbens. We also see effects on cardiovascular, uh, respiratory, um, nausea and vomiting through various areas in the brainstem, and sensu integration in the uh, thalamus and striatum. You can see over here on this autoradiograph the density of the expression of uh, these receptor types. You can see the more uh, brightly colored areas on the autoradiograph are areas of the highest expression. Uh, here we're going to be talking about uh, delta receptors. So these are expressed primarily in the forebrain, as you can see from the uh, autoradiograph over here. These play a role in olfaction, motor integration, reinforcement, and cognitive function. There's also some overlap with areas expressing mu opioid receptors, suggesting um, they play a role in the modulation of an analgesia, or uh, suppression of pain. Uh, kappa receptors are found primarily in the striatum, amygdala, hypothalamus, and in the pituitary, as you can see over here. And these are involved primarily in the regulation of pain perception, um, gut motility, and dysphoria. The final type of receptor we're discussing is the NOPR receptor. This is very widely distributed in the central nervous system as well as the periphery. Uh, usually a high concentration of the receptor in the cerebral cortex, limbic system, thalamus, raphe nuclei, and in the spinal cord. Uh, because of its distribution, it suggests a role for these receptors in analgesia, feeding, learning, motor function, and or endocrine regulation. So a wide array of effects for a very widely distributed receptor type. Um, all of the receptors are linked to G proteins, which you might remember a bit about G proteins from our previous units, and are probably metabotropic. So let's talk a little bit about these endogenous uh, opioid signaling molecules. So endorphins are peptides that can bind to opioid receptors. Um, there are four large peptide precursors that we're going to talk about that are processed into smaller uh, active opioids. So these big peptide precursors don't do anything until they are cleaved apart by enzymes. Uh, and you can see here, we've got uh, prodynorphin, uh, POMC, proencephalin, and uh, pronociceptin. Uh, and you can see over here, these are displayed sort of schematically. Um, you can see along the different sort of sequences of these peptides, there are different chunks that um, comprise these peptides that can signal. So an enzyme might come along to uh, proencephalin and cleave out some of these enkephalin molecules. And then those uh, enkephalin peptides can go and bind to opioid receptors and do their thing. So basically we have these four large peptide precursors that contain a number of different uh, peptides that can be broken apart and used to signal. Notice that not all of the peptides contained within these large peptides are um, endogenous opioids. So we have ACTH here, for example, which we're going to come back and uh, talk about later on. So uh, there are widespread locations of these peptides and these implicate them in many functions. So this isn't surprising. This is basically a list of all of the stuff that we've talked about previously pain suppression reward, motor coordination, endocrine function, feeding, uh, response to stress, etc. cetera. Um, these endogenous opioid molecules can govern all of these things depending on where they are and what receptors they're binding to. So the peptides aren't necessarily selective for a receptor type, but they do show a relative sort of preference in terms of their binding affinity. So certain peptides have a higher tendency to bind with certain receptors. Um, so don't feel like you need to memorize all of that, but here's a nice table from your book showing sort of in a condensed format, uh, the receptor subtype, um, the endogenous ligands that have a high affinity for that receptor subtype, the locations where the signaling is the most dense and the functions that it maps onto. So this is basically everything we've talked about in this lecture condensed down into one nice uh, table for your reference and your studying. Okay, uh, so that is it for our discussion of receptor subtypes and signaling peptides. I'll see you next time.